Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence's to-do list. Yes, I'm back in uh, Factorio Space Exploration here and I'm having a look through all of the things that I need to do for, um, on my current cunning plan. <laughs> so, I've made some good progress on this since, since the last video. Um, where, so I've designed the Vulcanite processing system. I've designed a core chunk processing system. So these these are new systems that I was going to put in on, um, on Miokin because I've got a bit fed up isn't isn't quite the right word but it'll do i've got i've got frustrated with the um the effort required to, to ship all of the vulcanite from um, from ganymede because if we have a look at ganymede um just looking at it here you can see that it's a very very long way away it's just generally and we've got all of this system, all this stuff built up here and it's it's kind of working but it takes because it's so far away it takes so much rocket fuel to fill one of these rockets up to bring it to bring all of the vulcanite back that it's just, it's, 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 it's dreadful. So there are a couple of possibilities. One is that I could go out here and just put in a bajillion more of these um, fuel refineries to make it make it a bit quicker, make it a bit, bit make make the make the sort make the uh, rocket fuel a bit more quickly. And sure, that would work. But the biggest problem is just it's it's, it's too far away. It's not practical. And the other problems with it being too far away is that you have more, the rockets are more likely to crash. So we've got these, um, in here, we've got these numbers. This is how much I've improved my rockets by. So, so there's, they're less likely to explode. They're less likely to fall apart. They're more likely, to, I'm going to get more of the bits back from them. But even so, that's still scaled by the distance they, they fly. So the further the rocket flies, the more chance it'll just... I, I don't know whether it's supposed to be it exploding on on route or whether it's just it missing the landing pad. But whatever happens, you just get a big pile of all of the stuff you've requested scattered around in the in, in sort of in the area around it, and then you end up with your bots um, with your bots in the area. Uh, where is it? Over over here, just scrambling to pick it all up and then put it into these chests where it gets loaded in here and so on. So so it's it's not the end of the world when that happens, but it is quite annoying and it's sort of it. it it causes problems. The other thing that happens every so often is that one of the cargo pods, you know when you get that sort of that thing where they all pour in in an arc and go into the into the landing pad, except that one of them usually misses and lands about here and or maybe it lands here and damages this building and and then you lose that um, that that cargo and it turns into scrap instead. So it's it's just generally it's it's, it's not great. There um it's it's just not great. And as you can tell by the the fact that there's only 7,000 in here and therefore that's not enough to summon a train we're not getting enough vulcanite through either so I thought right let's do it differently let's do it better let's go back to Miokin uh, now that I've got some better tech and can do can can deal with that better so the plan is we go out there we build we build up the um, the vulcanite processing system I designed we put in a core chunk processing system as well because I want to get I want to start um, producing all of the ores in another way, and I'll talk about that in a bit more in a little while. However, I'm going to need power on uh, Miokin. <clears throat> so there's a couple of choices here. Uh, the the ob well, there's, actually there's a few choices. I could go out there, I could build up a massive, massive solar farm um, using the new red solar panels that are pretty good, so it wouldn't be quite as big as the one that was, that was out there before. Um, in fact, let's have a look at Miokin, and then we can um, I can talk about this a bit more. Um, Re realistically so we had yeah we had this big solar farm here it's been beaten up a bit by um uh, by asteroids and things but basically there was this massive solar farm here and this was just about capable of running this tiny tiny processing facility here so that that wasn't enough that won't do so i so i decided I, yes i could get i could get more solar power by upgrading all of these to the red solar panels uh, they're much better but I'd still, then it would still all fail at night because the Holmium battery-based accumulators, yes, I can make them and they are much better. But making them en masse is going to be expensive and I just, I kind of don't want to. <clears throat> I'm a bit miffed with, solar just isn't isn't that great in my, in my estimation. So, option B is to come out here and build a nuclear power plant like I've done everywhere else. Um, and that, that would work. Um, there's a couple of downsides to it. One of them is that there, um, it requires a supply of uranium, you need to process the uranium, yada yada yada. So that's an extra step to go through. Now, if I remember correctly, that yeah, there is some, there is a bit of uranium on this planet, so that isn't the end of the world. That would be manageable. The bigger problem is the lack of water, but I'd get round that by using the um, condenser turbine. So, so yeah, nuclear is is possible. However, I've done science now. I've got to the point where I've got this. Um, energy beam system. So I designed a beam receiver and emitter. Um, that was relatively, well the emitter was easy, the receiver was the hard part of that. So we'll talk about that. I'll show you, I'll show you that in a minute. And then 
And then the plan was I'd load my spaceship up with all of the stuff for these things and some rail to build up on, on Myokin, fly up to orbit, get stuff for the energy beam zapper thing, which was, I mean, that was kind of expensive. If we look at the, um, can I look up beam? No. Can I look up, what's it, what is it even called? It's this thing, the energy beam everythings. So these are, these are quite expensive. They use some exotic materials. They use various things like that. So it was a bit of a mission to make it. Um, oh, here we go. And then you also need, well, I'll get into this in a bit, but the, re the point is you need quite a lot of exotic stuff to make this. So I built those in space. Then, then I flew to Kalidus orbit. So we, now we can go and have a look at what I've been up to. In Kalidus orbit, and the reason I've come here is because there's loads and loads of solar power available because we're really close to the sun. If we look at the, um, the u universe map, star map, this thing. Yes, here we go. There's the sun, Kalidus, and my space station it's about here i think so it's getting enormous quantities of energy from the uh, from the solar um and then myokin's not too far away and then you can see the rest of the sort of the the, the system heading off down that way so i t i went to Kalidus orbit built up this big solar array this now this is there's what i think there's something like 150 solar panels here uh, let's get an actual number 190 solar panels here they're producing two gig capable of producing 2.3 gigawatts of power and that's all just being slurped straight up by this beam emitter thing here. So the energy beam emitter itself takes a gigawatt to do absolutely nothing. Then you've got these injector things that take an additional gigawatt each, and you can put multiple of them on here. And that pa and the power you get into those gets squirted in through this chamber and then blasted out of this emitter. So from here we can we can send a gigawatt well th with one of these we can send a gigawatt of energy out for, for two gigawatts of input if i had more of these if i had 10 of these and we'd be able to send nine gigawatts out for 10 gigawatts of input so that sounds about right uh, nine of these one of these 10 gigawatts nine gigawatts being transmitted so these are really really effective ways at, at, at sending power around your around your solar around your your system now they're not 100%, they're not 100% efficient. You lose a certain amount going through atmospheres. So conveniently here, there is no atmosphere. So the the emitter is 100% efficient. I, I think, I imagine, probably. At the other end, it has to go down on, onto Myokin. So there's a bit of atmospheric disturbance there, and I think we get something like 85% of the power through, which is pretty good and is more than enough to keep that base running. So that was the first thing I did. That this was this was really easy. I'm going to come back here again later to the same place. I found massive quantities of iron here, so we might we might go mining that as well. We'll see. Um, but also, but mainly, I came here because this is where the um, this is where the sun is strongest. I'm also going to need to build a rocket probe launching facility here to get the solar data for whichever um, science pack you need that for. So that's going to be another reason to come back here later. But for now, this is this is enough, and I may end up building a few more of these because I think there are some other places that could do with this. So next up, um, I then went to Miokin, and here I need to do all kinds of things. So let's close all of this. Right. So the first thing I did was over here. Yes, I built this beaming receiver plant thing here. So this is an energy beam receiver. This is the other side of that transmitter I was just talking about. And we've then got loads of um, heat exchangers. So the heat comes out of these down the heat pipes goes into the heat exchangers which turn water into very very hot steam at 500 degrees C which goes through the turbines they produce uh, a load of um, they produce a load of electricity from it now then and then they and then, and then because these are condenser turbines they actually give some of the some of the water back so that you only get 75% energy efficiency out of them but I've got so much energy coming in here that I don't really care about that as you can see this is now at eight and a half thousand degrees C and still getting hotter that's crazy um, actually, maybe it's yeah, it's sl still slowly getting hotter. So they're only 75% energy efficient, but they do turn 99% of the steam back into water, and that goes back into these tanks here. So we've got plenty of water. These are, these are only at 15k because this is limiting them. So to bootstrap it, as you can see, I built this sort of plus-shaped thing. This seems to be plenty of energy for what I'm doing. Let's have a quick look at the power power usage. Yeah, so I'm, pr I'm producing 486 megawatts at least at the moment while all, while the sun's up. Um, and I'm only using 407 of it, so it's enough. It's keeping things running. If we look over the longer ranges, we, you can see it, it's it's working. This is enough. Um, but I could, if I needed to, I could put I could make these these bit bits that stick out twice as long and get get more power out of it that way. Because uh, I don't want to put in additional beam receivers uh, because that would require additional beam transmitters, and they're a bit of an effort to put together. So to get it 
uh, bootstrapped. I dropped in these um, chemical plants here, uh, chucked some ice in them to melt, turn into water to get that going. That's now, as you can see, is all used up. So to be honest, I might as well get rid of these. They're no longer in use. Um, that, but that worked fine for the sort of as a bootstrap. The next thing, what was what was the next thing on the list? The next thing was to build vulcanite processing. So that was, um, I mean, that was that was fairly easy. I, I built up a vulcanite processing system in in uh, Creative Mod, and then came up here and just dropped in the um, the, the blueprint. Now, as as before, uh, sorry, the one I built before. So up here, this this one up here um, has no no beacons at all and it, uh, no modules at all. So it's generally terrible. The one I built up on Ganymede, um, it has mod it has modules in it, but it wasn't really beaconed. Perhaps in fact, it's not at all beaconed. Probably because that was just before I really had the good beacons and just didn't bother I'm not really sure it's not very good either way so I've, I've filled it full of, of uh, productivity modules but not use any of the beacons so that means these are all really slow and really really power hungry so that's why I've got all of this area taken up by these machines all of these all of this um, and it's producing about two blue belts worth of um, vulcanite in the end which I mean, it's not too shabby but it's, it's not a great amount back on um, no not here back on Miokin yes here I've got the same amount of output that's these well three blue belts I don't know how I'm not sure these are quite completely full um, but it but anyway there's a decent amount of um, vulcanite being produced from here from this tiny little area and that's because I put in here I put in these um, these wide area beacons and they're full of efficiency and speed modules and that makes everything run at two and a half times speed despite the productivity modules and still only using plus 20 percent power so or in this case yeah plus 20 percent power 2.1.5 times speed so they're all running much more much more quickly than they would normally they're running more efficiently well almost, almost as efficiently as they would normally and they're producing the extra through productivity bonuses so that's working really really well we're producing loads of the um, vulcanite as an output here and as you can see this, this warehouse already completely full so good um now what's next um so yeah the next thing that uh, that's on on the sort of the, the the list here is that there's as you can see there's a suspicious gap here and that's that's for a spaceship so if we have a look at back at norvis now i should down here somewhere if it's still here i can't find the damn thing is it over yeah here we go over here there's this spaceship which is currently not working great so this is this one as you can see um has water tanks in it so it fills up with water from norvis from this uh, pump here glub 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 and it, so it takes water off to miokin for it to use in those condensing turbines so it's a sort of a, it's not it's not a closed loop but we have this to keep it topped up we then have a vulcanite warehouse here this fills up with vulcanite and any stone that's produced through the um the vulcanite production process all gets brought here gets dumped onto these belts and into these stations so that should be working we've got 3.3k in there so that suggests that the train has been coming through because we've brought like 500 stacks in here next question let's have a quick look to see why this isn't working uh feeding it to these ones you are saying if greater than 50,000 okay so that's that's the launch um this end we say full of fuel so that's to take off from no wait yeah if full of fuel so that's to take off from the space station and over here we have tick equals two, tick equals two, vulcanite equals zero, output a tick. Okay, so that's all right. And what's about this one? If position equals 510, output a tick. So here we've got two ticks being input. Output signals. So we're sending an output signal telling it to take off, but for some reason it isn't. Is that because I've forgotten to wire this up something? Yes, it is. So what I need to do is I need to wire this to there so it goes to the input yes there we go if i wire this to here it will then be connected to the input of the um, command console and that will cause the spaceship to take off like that <laughs> and if we now go to the star map we can see there's the ship it's called lucas for some reason let's give it a better name let's call it volcano just because that feels feels like a nice name for a vulcanite ship so where's the where's the, where's the, where's the rename tron here it is Let's call it Volcano. Right. Volcano. There we go. Yes. 
So as you can see, this has now flown up to Norvis orbit, which isn't very far. Uh, we don't want the water here. We don't want. Well, we do kind of want vulcanite here, but it's not getting any this way. But this is here now, so that it can refuel. So we're, we're topping up the um, the ion stream. That's going to be really quick because you don't need huge amounts of that. And we're topping up the fuel. And all of this was used in taking off from Norvis and taking off from Myokin, um, but the other way around. So it's used up quite a lot of the fuel from here. So we now need to pump a load of it out. But we've got plenty of it up here. These tanks are all full, and when they're not full, they'll fill up from here, and then this will go off to Athalia and pick up more fuel. So this is this this works nicely. And then here we fill these back up again. Eventually, that'll get to over whatever the magic number is, uh, 590,000. Um, so some way to go yet. <laughs> uh, once it gets to that point, the ship will then take off and fly off to um, back off to to to, to Miokin. And I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to work. <laughs> we saw the last one didn't because I'd missed out one of the cables, but basically the system seems to be generally working. The other little detail on this, which is um, very worth looking at, um, Norvis, right, is that we have a box here that is requesting um, 400 uh, space, um, sorry, meteorite defense ammunition. And we have that so that we can bring it so it will automatically it, it will then automatically be brought in the spaceship with everything else to just over here yes here we go let's try not to land where the spaceship's going to come in i don't want it to squash me or just sit in orbit going oh, no. so the spaceship then lands here we can load it up with the vulcanite we can load it up with the stone and then this this arm here oh and unload the water as well so that's that's all all um, passes that around as it should and then this inserter here will unload the meteorite defense ammunition into this chest where it can then be used with the, all of these meteorite defense guns and that was because I thought yes I could go around here I could set up a, a stone mine and a copper mine and an iron iron mine maybe I couldn't set up an iron mine I could go out and set up all those mines and start that and, and start making them up here but it's just so much easier. I've got a spaceship coming here it's so much easier just to stick in an extra chest and bring those over in the spaceship so I did and yeah, that works. We're now, um, as I say, waiting for the spaceship to come back. Let's have another look at the, uh, see how that fueling is getting on. Not too bad. They're looking, uh, some of them are looking fairly full. Some of them not so much. Got up to a total of 370. All right, well, through the magic of editing, we shall come back when this is nearly full. Well, we're nearly there. The last bit seems to take a bit longer, and I think that's probably because the um, the rate that this pump this pump is basically pumping straight into this tank. So if this tank is full, the the rocket fuel then has to sort of dribble across to the other ones that don't have as much in, and there's nothing pushing it across like that. So it just sort of goes slowly. So as you can see, this pump isn't quite going absolutely flat out. But there we go. There's the spaceship leaving. Flip, gone. And if we now have a look at the um, the star map, we can see. There it is, there's the volcano leaving Norvis. And on its way out, back off to Miokin. It's going to take a while to get there. It's quite a long way, and that is quite a slow ship. It's it's built to be a cargo ship. You can see there it's got the one one ion thruster on the back of it, just, to, just for sort of maximum efficiency. But it'll be fine. It'll get there eventually, and that's all that matters. If, it, if I find the vulcanite isn't coming through quickly enough, I can always just make a second identical ship to that one, and they can, then the two of them can sort of fly back and forth independently and just queue up when they, when they uh, if, if they ever meet so that, that should be absolutely fine so that's um, most of what that's a good chunk of what I've been up to so far there's a few more things I'm going to talk about but I think I'll leave those to the next episode because it's been quite a long one already I think um, I don't I, I don't I don't know I can't really tell because I had that sort of cut out in the middle <laughs> but it's been about the sort of length I aim for so as always thank you for watching i hope it's been an interesting episode and um, i look forward to seeing you next time don't forget to come along to the streams on tuesdays and we also stream uh, factorio industrial revolution on the thursdays that's with um, several several of us playing that one um, and of course the gta videos come out a couple of times a week as well so that's all all worth watching as always thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one